disciples apart in the way and said unto them, the crucifixion was not just something that came suddenly, even before the disciples. Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, that Lamb of God that came to take all the sins of the world away. He called his disciples apart. And this is what he told them in verse 18, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem. And the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and to the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death. Verse 19, And shall be delivered unto the Gentiles to mock and to scourge, and to do what? And to do what? And to crucify him. And the third day he shall rise again. You see right there that Jesus knew it was coming. And he prepared for it. He prepared his spirit, his soul, his mind. He prepared everything for it. He knew he was going there to Jerusalem. There will be the betrayal. And there will be the crowning with thorns. There will be the scourging and the stripes. There will be the suffering and there will be the crucifixion. He knew it and spoke about it before it came. Chapter 26 of Matthew. Matthew chapter 26. The prediction of his crucifixion. Verses 1 and 2. And it came to pass when Jesus had finished. All these things he said unto his disciples. Have you noticed he said some things to his disciples that he never said to the people of the world? Have you noticed he revealed the depths of knowledge and the depths of the truth about the crucifixion? He revealed that to his own disciples. And he never revealed that to the people of the world. The world remained in ignorance. But his own disciples knew it was coming. And as it was then, so it is even today. That there are many things the believers know that unbelievers don't know. And there's the victory of the cross, the conquering that comes from Calvary, that children of God today ought to know by the revelation of the Spirit, that the people of the world, those who do not have the Spirit of God, that they do not know. And how we thank God and praise the name of the Lord because of this great revelation that is given unto us, that the people of the world do not have. In fact, Jesus Christ, blessed are your eyes for all you see. And for your ears for what they hear, because the princes and the prophets and the people of the world have looked for this to see and to understand, and they have not understood. And I praise God for you here this morning because of what you hear. Victory is coming to your soul. You are going to conquer with Christ and in Christ in Jesus' name. Because we know something the world does not know. We see something the world does not see. And we perceive, we understand what the world does not perceive, what the world does not understand in verse 2. You know that after two days in the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified, the Son of Man, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, the one that was sent on purpose by the Father, the Son of Man, the one that came to carry, to take away all our sins, the Son of Man, He that came to be our Savior, the Son of Man, He that came to be the final sacrifice, the Son of Man is going to Jerusalem and is going there to be crucified. The prediction of his crucifixion and it came true exactly as he predicted it exactly as it was prophesied and predicted so it came matthew chapter 27 
in Matthew chapter 27, reading from verse 33. Matthew chapter 27, verse 33. And when they were come unto the place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of his call, they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with God. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink it. Actually, vinegar is what they used as painkiller in those days. And he wanted him to just be able to go through the trauma and the pain of that crucifixion without feeling it too much. But Jesus rejected that. He was willing to drink the cup that the Father had given him to drink. He was willing to drink the cup, the cup of judgment, and the cup of the wrath of God, and the cup of agony and suffering in the crucifixion that took place on the cross at Calvary, so that he'll bear the full weight of the condemnation and the punishment of humanity because of the evil that we have done. And so he rejected the vinegar. Then he was started five and he crucified him and parted his garments and casting laws that it may be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And so you will see that it was according as it was predicted. Jesus Christ died a painful death, an agonizing death. He died as a substitute for you and for me. And you don't have to bear the punishment anymore. You don't have to carry the pain anymore. You don't have to suffer the sickness anymore. Because now by his stripes we are what? And by his stripes, I am healed. Can you say that? By his stripes, I am healed. It is done in Jesus' name. That's why he suffered. That's why he went to Calvary. That's why the crucifixion took place. The crucifixion was to make you conquer every sin and any sin that the devil might throw at you from any direction. The crucifixion was supposed to make you an overcomer. You are not a victim anymore. You are a victim because of the crucifixion in Jesus' name. In John chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 16. John chapter 19 verse 16. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. And he took Jesus and led him away. And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of his call, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha. And in verse 18, it says, Where? They crucified him and two other with him on either side one and Jesus in the midst. In verse 19, and Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross and the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews is actually the cross that led to the crown. That was the only way to get to the crown. That was the only way to coronation. First of all, he died on the cross. First of all, the lamb, lamb that was slain. And after that, the lion of the tribe of Judah. The crucifixion led to the coronation. From the cross, he went to take the crown. The King of the Jews, Jesus Christ. In verse 23, Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments 
and made four parts to every soldier a part, and also a coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout in verse 24. They said, therefore, among themselves, let us not reign, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be that the scripture may be fulfilled, which says, they parted my garment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. Let's go to verse 33. In verse 33, but when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his bones. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he says truth, that ye might believe in verse 36, for these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled, a bone of him shall not be broken, verse 37, and again another scripture says, they shall look on him whom they pierced. Everything that happened to Jesus at the time of that crucifixion, from the betrayal, to the mockery, to the jesting, to the insults, to the abuse, to the carrying of the cross, and to the patching of the garments, to the crucifixion itself, everything that happened until it was pierced with the spear, everything was prophesied, the prediction of the crucifixion. And I pray that as God is revealing all these things to us, we'll be partakers of the glory, partakers of the riches, partakers of the outcome of that crucifixion in Jesus' name. And I pray that the crucifixion will bear a spiritual fruit in your life. I say to bear a spiritual fruit in your life. And because of the, because of the crucifixion, the power in the crucifixion, the glory in that crucifixion, the coronation in that crucifixion, the crowning in that crucifixion. You'll be a partaker of the riches of glory in Jesus' name. As the crucifixion was predicted, so our participation in that crucifixion, our identification with that crucifixion, our victory because of that crucifixion, our exaltation because of that crucifixion, our enjoyment of the riches of the kingdom because of that crucifixion was also predicted. And I pray that God will open your eyes to see. You have a mind to understand. And when you understand, the privilege of the crucifixion will come into your life in Jesus' name. I thought you'd say greater amen. Point number two now, our partnership, our participation, our identification in his crucifixion. As the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ came true, as it was predicted, so we ought to understand that our crucifixion too, and the benefit of our crucifixion too, and the glory, the exaltation of our crucifixion to you, as we believe all that victory and all that success and all that exaltation and all that overcoming life, overcoming conquering spirit, coming as a as crucifixion, will also be upon your life in Jesus' name. As it was predicted, it happened unto Jesus. As it is predicted, it will happen to you. I said it will happen to you. And now the crucifixion is over, the coronation and the crowning has now taken over, and the benefit is coming upon your life, even from this very moment in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 6, verse 6, 
our participation, our partnership in his crucifixion. Romans chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Think about that. It says, don't just talk about the crucifixion of Christ and stop there. Think about the effect in your own life. And think about the fulfillment in your own life. Think about the accomplishment in your own life. That our old man, that's the self within. That's the very nature of sin. And that is the very root of depravity in our lives. Our old man, that is the self, that is the nature, that is the first Adam, that is the corruption of the nature, that is the propensity to do evil, that is the power that drove us to sin. That old man is crucified with him. And when that old man, your old man in particular, the one that traces up its ugly head, and the one that drives you to do what shouldn't be done, and the one that drives you to do what you do uncontrollably, when that old man is crucified, it becomes impotent and powerless and will not be able to effectively accomplish anything in your life in Jesus' name. The old man, the old man, the root of sin, the Adamic nature, the inbred sin, the very root that causes all the fruits of sin to grow in our lives. When that old man is crucified, something new will happen in your life. Something different will happen in your life. And what the Lord is expecting this morning after the message is that you'll take the old man and take that old man to Calvary. The old man that compelled you to do evil. You'll take that old man to Calvary. And when you take that old man to Calvary, it will be crucified. I said it will be crucified. And it says in that chapter 6 verse 6, knowing this, you need to know it. Knowing this, you need to experience it. Knowing this, you need to possess it. Knowing this, it ought to be a reality in your life as the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ was a reality. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. That the body of sin might, the what? Tell me. That the body of sin might be nurtured, developed, free to do whatever it likes, what's to happen to that body of sin? That the body of sin might be destroyed. That's the very nucleus of sin. Let me use the word you understand. That's the one that generates other things. The generator. The one that gives active strength and power to sin. That that body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. Now that body of sin that is destroyed. That old man that is crucified. And can you tell me its activity? Can you tell me how it operates? And can you tell me the reason why it is the urgent thing, it is the important thing, it is the indispensable thing, it is the number one priority thing we must do this morning and take that old man to Calvary again, to be crucified with him. Why? Look at chapter 7. In chapter 7, I'm reading to you there from verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal. When it says I there, it's talking about the inner man. When it says I there, it's talking about the Adamic nature. When it says I there, it's talking about the self within. That's why we need this 
participation. That's why we need this partnership in the crucifixion of Christ. It says, I am sold on the scene, but that which I do, I allow not. What the old man does within me, he said, me, myself, in my waking moments, in my reasonable life, I don't like it. I don't want it. Can you identify with that? Are there things you do you don't appreciate? Are there places you go, it's like there is something engineering you. There is something stirring you up. There is something motivating you. There is something over controlling you. There is something driving you. You are a driven man, a driven woman, and it is a self within. And that's why it says, for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that I do not. He said, my head goes beyond my heart. My head knows this is the right thing to do. My head knows this is the righteous thing to do. But then my heart is so weak because there is a control. The inner man, the old man, the self nature is controlling what I do. Then he said, what I would, I do not. But what I hate that I do. In verse 16, if then I do that, which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin, the body of sin, the nature of